Sweet. So I'm going to be talking today about securing AI apps with MCP Defender. So quick background about myself. I've been a software engineer for about 10 years, and I've worked at small to really big companies. And over the last few months, uh, my friend Saurabh and I uh, have kind of really fallen in love with MCP. Um, Henry's described it really well. But just to recap, it enables AI that finally does work for us uh, through integrating through the tools that we already use. Um, and we're still really early because developer awareness is high, but most non-technical people haven't heard of it at all. So what is MCP Defender? It's an open source desktop app that runs in the background and it proxies and scans traffic between AI apps and MCP servers. So the, the four apps that we support today are Cursor, Visual Studio Code, Windsurf, and Claude. Um, and right now we're available as a, a beta on Mac. Uh, you can download it on mcpdefender.com. Uh, we have Windows and Linux apps coming soon. And as I mentioned, we're open source, AGPL 3.0 license, so you can find the, us on GitHub. Um, so why did we even build this? So as we did research into MCP, we realized the attack surface is really big. Uh, just over the last few weeks, pretty much every week, there's a new published attack from a security company. And our goal with MCP Defender is to basically stay up to date with these attacks and ensure that our users are protected against the latest attacks. So most of the attacks that have been published so far are based around some form of prompt injection. So this also includes tool poisoning, if you've heard that term before, it's also another form of prompt injection. And the common theme here is there's no clear way for an LLM to tell what are instructions versus user data. So I'll give you a quick example here. Um, this is the cursor chat, and I'm asking cursor to uh, look at this GitHub issue, look at the crash log inside, and um, figure out how to, how to fix it. But uh, so this is the actual GitHub issue itself. It looks pretty innocuous. Um, users just reported that it's crashed. Uh, but buried deep inside this issue is a uh, instruction for the LLM. So it's basically trying to steal my um, SSH private key and, and send it off to an attacker server. So how does this protection actually work? So as I mentioned, it's a proxy. And so all of your traffic from all your apps on the left um, go to go through MCB Defender and talk to your services on the right. So I'll give you an example with GitHub. Uh, you make a call, uh, sorry, with Cursor, you make a call to let's say fetch a GitHub issue. It goes to MCB Defender. MCB Defender then scans the request. If it looks good, sends it over to GitHub, which uh, the GitHub MCP server executes it, sends back a response. And then optionally, MCP Defender can also scan the responses before uh, returning the response back to Cursor. So um, the apps that we support today, they all have some sort of mcp.json configuration. Um, and you know, if you guys have seen this JSON file before, it's just a bunch of server entries. The way MCP Defender works is we rewrite these server entries to send the traffic to our proxy instead of directly to the server. And we also uh, monitor these mcp.json files so that in, in case you add a new server or you edit one, uh, we automatically detect the change and, and keep you protected. So I'll give you a quick example here. Um, this is the GitHub MCP server, uh, one of the entries in, in, in the JSON file. And the names at the top, then the command npx in this case, um, some arguments, and then the GitHub access token as an environment variable. So when you enable MCB Defender, this gets converted to this entry. Uh, pretty similar, it's got the name up here with a lock and MCB Defender, just so you know that it's on. Um, the original command is retained, uh, but we instead pass it as an argument to this CLI.js script that we've written. And that's the thing that actually does the um, proxy. It sends the data to the proxy. So um, down here, you got the same GitHub access token and then some bookkeeping um, environment variables for MCP Defender, like which app is calling it and what the server is calling. So what actually gets scanned by MCP Defender? We're scanning four different things. One, of course, is the actual request. So the, the exact data that would get sent to the server, but we're also injecting a few other things. So for example, um, tool metadata. This includes the name of the tool, description, parameter types, pretty much anything that is susceptible to prompt injection, we want to be able to scan. Uh, and then two other things is the user intent. So we include the user's original prompt um, and also the LLM intent. And we basically ask the LLM to include some reasoning of why it's actually calling this tool call. Um, both of these really add context and make it so that we reduce false positives on our scans. 
So as I mentioned, um, all the all of that data is basically sent to an LLM with a bunch of signatures to check against. And you know, if if something's detected, it gets blocked. Otherwise, it uh, it's kind of invisible. You don't really think about it. Uh, you can scan with a free MCB Defender account, or you can use your own API keys uh, for OpenAI or whatever you use. And soon you'll be able to use a custom LLM, um, so you can just point it at something remote or even local. Um, so let me show you a quick demo of how this works. So this is um, MCV Defender. Um, we got three tabs up here. The main tab is called Threats, and this is some. Um, this is my threat graph or my traffic graph from the last few weeks. Um, down here is all the MCP tool calls I made along with their status. And um, the apps tab shows me like which apps I have installed. Um, and it, you know, also mentions that it's protected. And also like it includes the servers that are configured for each app along with each tool for each server. So right now I have cursor, uh, Visual Studio Code and Windsurf um, protected. The last tab is signatures. And this kind of gives you some very basic signature management. So these are all the signatures that get sent to the LLM and are checked. Uh, the data is checked against these signatures. Right now, you can just disable and enable them, but we're going to build some UX around this so you can add your own signatures and uh, manage sets of signatures and things like that. And then finally, um, the settings page here is uh, pretty straightforward. You got your account if you want to use that. Um, you can choose which model to actually scan it. So in this case, I'm using the MCP Defender account. Right now, we just have these two from OpenAI, but we're going to add some more. If you want to use these, um, all you have to do is just include your API key, and you can make those calls directly to those LLMs. And um, we also have, you, you can choose which what things get scanned. So by default, just the request gets scanned, uh, but you can choose whether to do both uh, or one or the other. Um, and then finally, we have this thing called MCP Secure Tools. Um, if you guys have ever used Cursor, or even some of the other apps, they basically avoid MCP for certain things. So for example, if you want, if, if the app wants to call something on the command line or add a file, often it just does it itself with some built-in functionality. It doesn't call any MCP tool to do it. So what we do is we add a set of tools that do these things and we instruct Cursor, for example, to always use our uh, MCP tools instead of the built-in tools. And that way we can actually scan them. Um, and yeah, down here is just the last bit of settings. You can uh, by default, it's on uh, during login. So it's just the whole point of it is to kind of run invisibly in the background and you don't have to think about it until something bad happens. So I'll show you a quick demo of using this within Cursor. Um, so I have a two props here. Uh, one of them is, you know, what are my Stripe products? So I have a Stripe MCP server configured. Um, so we'll wait for Cursor here to make the MCP call. So the call is made and then it starts spitting out some data. Uh, and then if I go back to MCB Defender um, in the Threats tab, I can actually see that um, Cursor is called the Stripe server with list products, and I can look at the details of which signatures got scanned, and clearly everything's allowed. Uh, the tool call was made. So now I'm going to show you how it looks if I make a, um, a call with something malicious. So this is similar to the one that I showed in the screenshot, basically fix this crash log in this GitHub issue. And this GitHub issue contains some malicious instructions uh, in the crash log. So we'll wait for cursor to execute the uh, MCP tool. And so you can see here, MCP Defender has blocked it. Um, and it says, you know, cursor tried calling Git issue and it was blocked because um, the GitHub issue contained malicious instructions for the LLM. And you get 30 seconds to um, allow our block. Um, and by default, if you don't respond, it'll block. I'm going to go ahead and click block here. And then uh, it, it shows up in the scan activity, just like the other one. You can see here again that um, these other signatures passed, but this one, it failed. And that's why it got blocked. So that's the demo. Um, let me head back to the slides here. So one question we get is, you know, why protect an LLM with another LLM? Like, why can't these signatures just be added to the system prompt of cursor, for example? Um, that's a great question. So MCP Defender, what we really offer is a unified and customizable layer of security signatures that are complementary to any app-specific checks. And most apps don't even have any sort of security checks. Like Windsurf, I've noticed, does a little bit of checking here and there, but this MCP Defender just ensures that you're protected at some level, at a high level across all of your apps. 
Uh, we're also adding deterministic signatures on top of the LLM based ones. So one example is like detecting and blocking if a private key is being sent in a request, uh, because that's usually you know, a bad thing. Um, and so what are we going to build uh, in the future? So right now we only support STDIO MCP servers, but there's been a lot of uh, buzz about remote MCP recently, uh, both streaming and SSE. You can actually use remote right now with MCP Defender as long as you use the uh, NPX MCP remote package, uh, but we're going to natively support it soon. And uh, we're also going to add support for more apps like Arc and Quad Code. Um, we're going to add custom and local LLM scanning, as I mentioned, and Windows and Linux apps as well. And finally, uh, we're doing this project uh, where we're implementing this uh, research paper from Berkeley and Fair called Secaline. And um, they've, they have some really promising results. Um, so they basically said with using this method, we can actually reduce the success rates of various prompt injections to around 0%. Uh, which is pretty exciting. So uh, we're working on that right now. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, you can check us out on mcpdefender.com and also on our GitHub. Thank you. Awesome. Sandeep, thanks so much for sharing all that. It's, uh, it sounds like you guys are making a lot of progress really fast. How, how big is the team? Um, it's just me and my friends, Rob. Awesome. Sounds like, uh, so did you guys start this year then? Just uh, sort of beginning of this year? Yeah, we started about two months ago. Um, but we've been playing with MCP uh, for, for a while now, since since January. Nice. Well, congratulations on moving so quickly. So the approach looks like it's all behavior-based, right? You're not doing any kind of scanning of MCPs or whitelisting, blacklisting of MCPs. This is all based on any MCP would benefit from MCP Defender because it's looking for behavioral attacks within the within the prompts and within the, the code, either going to the MCP or within the MCP itself, right? Is that, did I understand that right? Yes, that's correct. Awesome. Really cool. Congratulations, man. It sounds like a, a really promising project and excited to see how it continues to develop. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Shannon.